utilities and governments have a huge role in capitalizing and catalyzing about $16 trillion between now and 2040. And this is because policy reform, fiscal incentives, structures, government, uh, forced obsolescence of government uh, uh, technologies, uh, for example, uh, will accelerate, will make this happen in the next uh, 20 years. Governments have started to look at energy efficiency as a primary resource uh, in any energy mix. And, th and this, is, this hasn't happened yet, not even in the developed markets. But this is the pathway in the next 10 years that government should take. Treat energy efficiency as infrastructure, treat them as a primary energy resource alongside fuels and renewables and all other energy sources for the global economy. It's interesting that uh, COVID-19 is shaking up our energy markets. I'd like to make that very strong conclusion that post-COVID-19, the whole world will not be returning to the pre-COVID-19 energy consumption and energy intensity based lights. No, we won't. We'll be packing less people in trains. We'll be making more car trips. We'll be packing less people in buildings and industrial plants. Uh, our inten energy intensity will definitely uh, go up. And, and uh, I think the whole world will just have to double time right now and catch up with the pre-COVID-19 uh, baselines. So what COVID has done is to raise the urgency of energy efficiency investments and implementation. Even those that are already on the green pathway will have to play catch up uh, right now. But here's the interesting thing. COVID-19 has the opportunity of making energy efficiency actually a stimulus activity. And this is very consistent with the pronouncements of the International Energy Agency. In the, in, in the Philippines, for example, we have demonstrated that for the same amount of stimulus or investment, you create 45% more jobs than normal infrastructure projects, whether energy, transport, or water. 45% more jobs. In the United States, 45 to 55% of new jobs in the energy sector were actually in energy efficiency, outsizing those of renewables, oil and gas, and power sector. So energy efficiency should be seen as a stimulus in the post-COVID-19, and it should be able to correct the post-COVID-19 distortions made by with the pandemic. Private sector uh, capital will always push the lion's share of the $24.5 trillion that IEA estimates between now and 2040. Now, while government is there to seed it, while development funders and climate funds are there to seed it and de-risk it, the lion's share will still be mobilized by private sector. And this will have to be done through modalities, through policy frameworks that would de-risk uh, private sector investments. I would say that if, if, if $16.5 trillion will have to flow through new products, new financial services, new financing modalities, uh, new procurement uh, methods, new financial structures. Take, for example, how can we use private capital for public sector energy efficiency? And, and this is enabling, like in, in many countries in Asia, many governments cannot actually procure ESCO performance contracts. Or how do we enable PPPs or public-private partnership for a bundle, let's say, of 100 government building retrofits? Or, or how do we engage private sector and government-owned companies entering into joint venture agreements for energy efficiency retrofits? So there's huge opportunity here to play around with innovative uh, financial structures, products, and services that will enable both debt, equity, and guarantee investments 
to push that uh, 16 and a half trillion dollars between now and, and 2040. So yes, uh, while government and climate funding there to enable the market to spark that uh, catalytic uh, action, it's still private sector at the end of the day that will deliver the lion's share. Our government plays a huge role. Every market has that normal behavioral market inertia, right? Uh, if, if, if there's no carrot, if there's no stick, the, the market will transform very slowly uh, through time. You need to crack the whip. We need to dangle carrots. We need new structures. We need government, you know, something that's never, almost never done. We need governments to actually finance the accelerated or forced obsolescence of low efficiency technologies. You know, there, a decade ago, I've, I've, I've been part of this global discussion. How do we get incandescent bulbs out of the global market? But we're past incandescent bulbs right now. There's so much cooling, air conditioning, refrigeration motors that have to be washed out to the markets and governments play a role in setting the policy framework as well as mobilizing financing to wash these uh, technologies away from the market. So yes, policy and regulation play a huge role because without that policy framework, things will happen very slowly and we will not meet our 2030-2040 targets, including the Paris uh, obligations.